For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Salvation rests upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Now all the world has just celebrated what supposedly was his birthday, on December 25th. And let me ask you, if it's his birthday, how many gifts did you give him? Did you write Jesus on his birthday? And now I'm here to tell you about Christmas that God has a gift for you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not you giving a gift, it's God giving you a gift, his son, that you may have salvation because you're going to die. You are a sinner, sinner caused death. You need to do something about that sin before you die. You may not ever see 2017. 2016 may be put on your tombstone. What you do before your dying death is a must. You must be born again. You must put your faith and work and practice in the shed blood, in the blood atonement of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. If you want the love of God, the love of God is shed abroad upon Calvary's cross that God himself, Acts 20:28, 20, shed his holy blood, his sinless blood, to pay for your sin. You can't pay for your sin. There is nothing you can do to get to heaven. Religion, works, money, that's not the acceptable cause of God, but the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. For Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, Jesus speaking, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now notice Jesus said, He is the absolute. Anything other than Jesus Christ, you will burn in a devil's hell. Those people that are cast into hell is because they have done something other than what Jesus Christ has done. Made atonement for our sins. Not of works. At least any man should boast. See, when we get to glory, it will be all about the Lord Jesus Christ and not us. It will be all about the finished work that Christ set out to do. From the day that he was born in that manger, to the day that he hung on that cross, and that tomb was emptied, and he sits upon the right hand of the Father right now, that is your salvation. That's the only way that will get you out of the devil's hell. Nothing else. Don't come to me with church. Don't come to me with cash. Don't come to me with religion. Come to God by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ without spot. For there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the, with the mouth confession is made. What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's man and Satan and the world that will make it more complex. The same Jesus that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, will take you and your religion, you and your works, to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And you'll scream out, the Lord, I went to Mass. Lord, I raised money for this. Lord, I gave for that. Lord, I did for that. And Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. 
And the only way God will know who you are is by the finished work of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. You're going to die. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned. So all will die. You are a sinner. One lie. One theft makes you a sinner, makes you guilty, makes you have to have a need by God. A need that cannot ever, ever be done by yourself or me. I can't save myself, and I cannot save you. I am washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you today could be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That your eternity can be changed from hell to heaven by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, because I have believed on the Lord. For God so loved. There's the love message that everyone wants. For God so loved. The world, that's you. That's us. In this world, God had a love for you. That He gave. Sacrificial. Giving. It's sacrifice. It's Given what I have to you is what God has, He's given to you. So I like presents. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. What is that gift? What is that thing that God has given you? It's not church. It's not money. It's not what you can do for salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Why? Why Jesus Christ? Why the story of the manger? Why the story of the cross? That whosoever... That's you and me. Whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, shall have everlasting life, shall not perish. So the fact is, if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to perish. God will throw you out. God will cast you out perishing because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. So going to heaven rest upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and not what you can do or your church or your pastor or your minister or your rabbi or whatever you think. Going to heaven is rest upon Jesus Christ. You say, why is it so important? I mean, if I die, I'll go to hell. I'll party with my friends and just leave me alone. Hell is so wicked and so vile and so corrupt and so much torrent of pain and suffering that God himself said, Son, go down there and fix a way that they may not go. The story of the infant Jesus to the man Jesus on the cross is that you may not go to hell by believing on him. And the story of that little infant Jesus to the man Jesus on the cross, if you choose to reject it, you will find yourself 
And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. When you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not have the love of God. You have the wrath of God upon you. Because you're telling God that what His Son has done for you is no good. When you go about another means or just totally unaccept the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you say there's no God, there's the wrath of God for you not believing in God, the by the God that you don't believe. When you say, well, I belong to this church, there's the wrath of God because you think church is more important than Jesus. Oh, I give to this organization, I have charity and all that. Wrath of God upon you because you think your money is more important than Jesus Christ. And the blessed hope and the glory is welcoming into glory when you believe on the shed blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse your soul. The question is, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully set upon Jesus Christ as your means to get to heaven? There is no other way. I said, Jesus said in his own words, I am the way. That's it. Nothing else. He is the truth. Everything else is a lie. If your church is preaching other than the blood atonement of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, your church is a lie according to Jesus Christ. Take it up with Him. If your church has another way to heaven, it defies what Jesus says. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Life is at Calvary. Life is when you come to that cross of Jesus Christ. And you receive that atonement, that, that payment that's being made by that bleeding Savior, God Almighty, the sinless blood, Acts 20:28. 20, when you receive that atonement for your sin. And you come away from the empty tomb in victorious living, going to heaven by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I am bringing you to a hill called Calvary today, where Christ died on the cross. And if you choose to go another way, other than God's way, you will face the wrath of God. The wrath of God is burning in hell because you will not do it God's way. God has set out a standard. God has set out a measurement. God has set out a means. And it's Jesus Christ, His Son, the only begotten of God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That's it. For God so loved the world. That's a past tense love. John 3.16. Check it out in the King James Bible. That is L-O-V-E-D. That's past tense. God does not love you today if you reject Jesus Christ. That love was upon the hill called Calvary where Christ died for your sins. There is the love of God. And if you want that love to continue... Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you will be put into the family, adopted by God as a child of God, by the Holy Spirit, by believing upon what Jesus has done for you. Come to Calvary's cross, look at Jesus on the cross, and say, nope, I don't want that. I don't need Jesus. And the Bible says again, and they believe not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. 
You see, when Jesus was on that cross, when Jesus was beaten and smitten, that's the wrath of God because we are sinners upon Him. And if you think you're so more important than Jesus Christ, God will say, okay, I'll let the wrath out on you. You want to pay for your own sins? You go into hell for all eternity and you pay for your sins or receive my son. God is not willing that any should perish. That's why he gave his son. God is not happy to throw people into hell. That is your choice. When you hear the Bible week after week after week saying that Christ died for you, He was buried, and He rose again that you might have eternal life. When you hear that, and you walk away with something else, that brings the wrath of God, the condemnation, into your life. Because you have heard the truth. Oh, I don't understand the truth. There are other religions. Shame on you. Shame on you for giving in to the devil and all his foolishness. There was a man about 2,000 years ago. Over a vast 400 people had witnessed his resurrection. Over 9,000 people had witnessed his testimony of his miracles. Twelve men lived with him for three and a half years and testified of his holiness, of his righteousness, There's more testimony in the Bible from the word of man that you can take to a court and find Jesus Christ, the one, the only. And yet you'll stand before a court one day before the judge. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll stand as a Christian on the works that you've done. There'll be no hell. Just rewards or lost the rewards. Or if you never have believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will stand before Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that the nail pierced hands and feet and sides are still there. As you watch those hands that were nailed to that cross for you, cast you out into a devil's hell forever. And you need not go. Step out. We'll have an open Bible. We will have the Word of God. And we will explain. We will guide you what God has to say. We're not going to argue. We're not going to fight. But we'll see what God expects from you for salvation. Verse by verse. And you can see the love of God is shed, is shed abroad by His Son and His Son alone. And God has in His Word an invitation. It says in the book of Isaiah, Come now, not later. You may not have a later. Two thousand seventeen may never come for you. 
That's not guaranteed. You're not even guaranteed this afternoon. Come now, let us reason together. That's you and God. That's God again reaching out to you. He's already reached out to you with His Son. He's reaching out again saying, Come on, let's get together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, you've got a sin condition. God is holy. You are not. And God says, Be ye holy as I am holy. And you are not. The holiness that you can get, the righteousness that you can get, is only by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You've got to have God's righteousness to get to heaven, and that God's righteousness is in the Son. And by the Father of that Son, He says, Come now, let us reason together. Sit down with that guy with the Bible and listen to what he's got to say. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God is willing and able and wanting to wash you of your sins to make you have your name in the last book of life and have eternal life. God wants you to believe on His Son and be saved. That's why God sends men with uh, men like me with the Bible to you. Because many of you will not be in church, and if you were in church, you wouldn't hear this message. You get a false message of a false love. The true love of God is that He sent His Son to die to suffer, to be buried, that His blood, God's blood, may atone for your sins. And it was signed, sealed, and delivered by the empty tomb, seated at the right hand of the Father. No other, absolutely no other man has ever come out of that grave yet. And when they do come out of the grave, it will be only by the power of God like He had unto His Son. Some into glory and some into everlasting destruction, the Bible says. If you ever have a question on your mind, you ever want to say, hey, I don't want to go to hell? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Don't turn to beads, don't turn to people. Turn to Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus for salvation. Because whatever you do believe... For your hope, if it's not Jesus, will stand in the same line of condemnation and be cast off into the lake of fire. Imagine you and your false Savior burning for eternity in a lake of fire when you can have the true Savior and be in glory. The gospel. Gospel means good news. What is the good news? That Jesus died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the way, that is the truth, and that is the life. That you may up. 
That is the only way to obtain salvation. There's only two means that we can ever preach about. We can preach about the heaven, the, pros the positive, or we can preach about hell, the negative. And the positive of, he of heaven is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Add nothing else to it. See, when Jesus said on that cross, it is finished, there are no artificial preservatives. There are no additives. It is a 100% natural ingredient that God approves of, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, religion ingredients are all those words you have no idea what they say and what they mean. And some of them ingredients will give you a deadly cancer which you cannot ever be healed of. And that deadly cancer is your sins will cast you in the lake of fire for not putting them under the blood of Jesus Christ. See, you have a sickness. You have a disease. Your disease is sin. Now, what is the cure? The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin. Some of you have had, had cancer. And in order to remove the cancer, a doctor had to go in there with a scalpel to remove that cancer. All of you are sinners. And all of you need God to come in and remove that sin by the blood and the Word of God. And God says, come now. And let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. You don't have to go to hell. You can step out right now, and I will show you, by the Bible, what you need to do. And it's not something to put off, because you said, come now. Death is sure. Heaven and hell are sure. Jesus Christ the Savior is the surest. insurance, Jesus Christ paid the premium. Nothing else can. Because in order to enter into the gates of New Jerusalem, you've got to have the blood of Jesus Christ. And nothing else. No additives, no preservatives, nothing artificial. It must be the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There are no other means. And how important is it that God sends men out to you to preach to you the power of the Word, the power of the Gospel, that you might believe and have eternal life? Death is coming. And so is Jesus. What are you resting upon? What is your means of support for the afterlife? 
If you're an atheist, you got no support. That ain't, ain't going to do you no good. Works, religion, that's a reed. You lean on it, and it bends over and knocks you down. The Bible says Jesus Christ is our strong tower. He's our strong wall. He is the rock. He is the foundation. He's the water of life. He's the bread of life. He's eternal life. He is the Son of God. He can be your Savior if you believe on Him. Or, you, or He can be your judge if you reject Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. What other gift, what other means can you do to satisfy God when He's already done what satisfies Him? The satisfaction of God is His Son. What else are you going to do besides His Son? Are you really going to think that you're such a good person, that you're so better than His Son? There is none good. No, not one, the Bible says. All have sinned. All have come to short of glory of God. For that rules you out. On that day that Jesus died on that cross, there were two other thieves that died on that cross. And neither one of them could save you. And yet one of those thieves turned to the Son of God and was saved that afternoon by the one that was in the middle. So no man can do your salvation. We got one high priest that offered up one sacrifice for all and seated down at the right hand of the Father as a finished testimony, as a finished atonement that Jesus saves and Jesus saves alone. Outside of nothing else. You can't look at God or pray to God and say, God, let me, into my, let me into your heaven, blah, 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 without the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't say that God loves me and you've rejected His Son. you got the wrath of God upon you for not believing that Jesus saved. You tell that to Allah, you tell that to Mary, you tell that to Joseph Smith, you tell that to all the religions. You got the wrath of God if you don't believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Religion will send you off into hell as quick as anything. And the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will save you as instant as possible. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Your debt that you owe to God can be paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. You owe God something. You, you owe God all the years that you sinned, every single sin, you owe God. You want to pay for it on your own? Step off in the lake of fire and pay for your sin. As for me, thank you very much. I don't want to do it. I'll rely on God's Son, Jesus Christ, and I'm washed in the blood, and my sins are in the blood. And I'm saved by the blood.
Well, what can else can you do? I can't even heal myself. Never mind. I can't do nothing of myself. Because I'm the created being, not the creator. And the creator of all the earth said, you're going to hell, and unless I give my gift, my son, there's nothing else that can be done for you. Now, what's the Big Bang done for you? See, we got a God that created us, we got a God that loved us, and we got a God that said, hey, I got your cure. And I want to give you a free will to say yes or to say no. It's up to you. But rest assured, people, of the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, as you hear this, you will stand without excuse if you stand condemned in the wrath of God to say, Oh, I never knew. Because you do now know what God expects from you through the Bible. He expects you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You've heard the words. Too many of you have ears that won't hear. I've been faithful. I brought to you the gospel and the word of God. That's all I can do. Salvation's on your part. You can be saved or you can be damned. I told you how to do both. I advise you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 